to it. No, that I actually just fucked up. I fucked up the stream already. I was streaming for seven minutes and I completely fucked up because my GameCube. Oh, because my GameCube adapter was in. And that's the weirdest thing to fuck up a video game, but it did. So, uh, take two on the Firewatch stream. Uh, we're gonna do a new game because, um, this was a. Oh, this was a fluke. What happened was, for some reason, my GameCube controller was inputting a constant up and to the left. So my my character, it was really funny, it was just spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. So, uh, that was fun. But we're back, and we're ready and ever. Uh, I heard a lot about this game. I heard a lot about it, how it's just kind of walking. Uh, but it's a great story experience. It's also funny because I am a fire guard in real life, and this is about being a fire watch. I see Julia. I already went through this part, but my reaction wasn't that funny, so you're not missing much. It's okay. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. I'm gonna go with, uh, this always works, this one on the right, it always, it always works. You're pretty, she says coolly. You are not. You are a future hangover. What? You reply confused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She flags down a waiter, and one week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Hey, I have control of my character. It was really funny. Literally, the stream was this. Like, it was... I don't even know. It was like... I can't even do it without with, without the controller. Oh, let me pick up this backpack. Oh, the elevator was stopping because I didn't have a backpack on. I see. I'm not going to go crazy and, like, check every corner. Only because I'm streaming. Okay, just go, just go. Do I have a sprint? I can't sprint. Okay, just walking. That's unfortunate. Is there an entrance? Oh. See a little clip in the wall there. Did I go to the wrong floor? Did I fuck up the game already? I feel like that was where the game was leading me, but I guess I'm wrong, so I'll try to find where I'm supposed to be. Am I just supposed to go back into the elevator? Oh, okay, my bad. Oh, the truck was red, yeah, I should have spotted that and... My bad. You date for over a year, she drives you absolutely nuts, it's great, Oh. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with the view of the mountains. You two drink beers out the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's a badass. Bucket. Bucket's a good dog, and for w and a week later, you totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. That's how dogs work. 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9:30, and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Kids. They're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple little idiots. That'd be pretty good. To, ooh, that would be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that. You say. 
These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably best that their parents get hitched. Yeah, statistically. I think. I don't know statistics. It's a great place to get married. Thoroughfare Trailhead. Do not forget to check in. No fireworks warning. Oh, okay. I don't have a sprint yet. Oh. Hey, Eddie. Are you there? My, it says my, my friend is watching. How are you doing? 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. And you're worried about... You're worried and getting angry over the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clear she's been having a fun time. You fight when you get she gets between the sheets. You get mad. You ignore her. I guess I'll get mad. Ignoring her's not. You call her and it's considered asshole. Yeah. She tells you to go fuck yourself and not to be such a baby. Yeah. You call her selfish. She knows you mean it and it hurts her feelings. Oh. Julia likes to draw. She draws a plan for her research. She draws all the places she go. She draws you. You pose and flex like He-Man. You frolic like a... Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh. Wow, what a badass. Wow, these colors look pretty nice. It's a pretty... It's a pretty solid color. Orange. It's a good old color. Good job, son. Two forks. Eight miles. Jesus Christ. That was a very slow uh, hop you did there, boy. 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. It's festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Jesus Christ. Bucket gets kicked. You confront the attacker. You scare him away. You beat his goddamn face in. Yeah, I would. I, my dumbass would do this. Your arm gets cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your out because for the shop, cops show up. Julia has to take a different path. Oh, from that day forward. Okay, you say okay. You don't want to go by that way either. From there, you walk by the river. Mm, sounds like me. Plants have kids get waylaid by work. Julie gets offered a job at Yale. Yale's in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate Department of Treasury wants to move. You absolutely do not. Ooh. You ask her if she commutes back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if she wants what wants, she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. Julia is sent home from Yale on a paid leave after having an episode. She lost on her calling for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember. Sh she didn't remember she had happily loaned them. To oh shit. She was found crying in the stairway. You say maybe that you guys should talk about it. Uh, talk about to, to talk to someone about it. You make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it. Uh, I should do the healthy thing, right? After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they worry that Julia might be suffering from an early onset dementia. She is forty-one. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. Yikes. It's me. It's me. <laughs> Look at my little dingling. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason. She's brought home by the police. She is devastated. She's sent home on a permanent medical leave. Some days, you get the Julia who calls you dope and your unborn child little idiots. The other days, you get a stranger. She pulls you into the bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her 
family. They are crushed and begin to make trips to visit her home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. You spend the days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. She suggests that Julia should live somewhere else, somewhere with 24 hours care, a home. It sits with you for a couple months. You decide to move her to a full-time care center. You determine to take care of her by yourself. Oh boy. Um. Oh sh. Fuck. Um. God damn it. I gotta do what's best for her. Fuck, man. Her family agrees with the decision. You find a fantastic place in Boulder and move her there. You see her every day, then every other day. You go to the bar with your old friends. It's not the same. You get the feeling that every wife tells her husband, if you put me in a home like that, like Henry did, I will cut your balls off. You slowly decide to not see your old friends that much. Your sister Susan moves to Boulder to be close to her. She visits her every day. You go with her some of the time. Susan buys you an old typewriter and urges you that if you won't see a, urges you to s use it if you won't see a therapist. You won't. You've always really liked Susan. Months go by. Bucket dies. She really doesn't remember him when you tell her. Sometimes it takes you a minute to lock it on you. In the back of your mind, you really believe it's because you see her less and less. Seeing her less and less makes you forget her more, you think. Summer is coming up and you see an ad in the paper for a job. And you take it. Turn on the power. Oh, it's like zombies. Hello, Two Forks Tower. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's a weird way to use it's the thing. Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. Hey there, Delilah. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? <laughs> People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then oh. can I sleep forever? <laughs> Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. 
You killed three ex-husbands. 